so many things happened in 2023 and at the same time there were so many things that did not but we were made to believe that they did this alt news video is about what did not happen in 2023 for example nobel prize committee deputy leader asle toya did not say that prime minister narendra modi was a front runner for the peace prize Almost every major media outlet in the country grossly misquoted Toya and reported the same. These included The Times of India, Times Now, Mint, CNBC TV 18 and several others. In the very first month of 2023, Alt News called out media misreports as many as six times. On the 10th, following a Delhi police ASI's death, days after he had been stabbed, News outlets identified the accused as Mohammed Anish. Propaganda outlet Sudarshan News called him a jihadi. In reality, his name was Anish Raj and he was a Hindu. On the 12th, following a false claim by filmmaker Vivek Agnihotri, media outlets reported that the Kashmir files had been shortlisted for the Oscars. On the 14th, ET, DNA, Times Now and others used an old video from Pakistan to show the present food crisis in the country. On the 16th, India Today, ANI and others used a Reuters photo of a plane crash from 2012 as visuals of the Yeti Airlines mishap in Pokhara on January 15. Again, two days later, on January 18th, Times Now, India Today and several other news outlets and journalists tweeted a video of a Pongal feast in Waterloo and claimed that it was a lunch hosted by Rishi Sunak in London. On January 27th, ANI, Times Now, Navbharat, News 18, Z and others falsely reported that a Pakistani flag was hoisted in Bihar on January 26. Police rubbished the reports. The flag in question was starkly different from the Pakistan national flag. The sequence of misreports continued throughout the year, from false reports about clean chit to Monu Manesar, to the incorrect claims about spectators singing the Hanuman Chalisa at the World Cup final in Mumbai. Apart from misreports, there were other ways too in which media outlets failed to carry out their basic duty, that is to present facts. The US-based investor research firm Hindenburg Research on January 24 published a 32,000-word report accusing the Gautam Adani-led Adani Group of engaging in brazen stock manipulation and accounting fraud scheme over the course of decades. CNBC reported that the company lost over $100 billion in about a week since the publication of the report. All major Indian TV channels chose not to discuss the Hindenburg report on January 25th and 26th. One of the lowest points for TV news in 2023 was Republic TV anchor Shweta Tripathi's bulletin on Cyclone Bipar Joy, which was both factually incorrect and improperly presented. Bipar Joy, when he comes here, 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 what will happen here? What will happen here? Hours before the cyclone made landfall in Orissa on June 15th, the Republic TV anchor hosted a show standing with an umbrella in the studio, twisting and turning, ducking and swerving as she spoke under the imagined influence of the storm. The result was both hilarious and pathetic. Hilarious because of its absurdity and pathetic because it ended up making a caricature of a natural disaster. Shweta Tripathi's antics were symptomatic of everything that's wrong with Indian TV media. In February, the murder of two Muslim youths, allegedly by car vigilantes from the Bajrang Dal, made headlines across the country. Just before the news broke, Alt News had profiled one of the main accused in the case, Mohit Monu Manesar. Monu's modus operandi, documented through social media, included high-speed chases and the open use of firearms. We found that Monu's actions received implicit support from local authorities and several BJP politicians and journalists. Eventually, Monu was arrested in the case on September 12th. Our investigation also revealed that two other accused, Rinku Saini and Srikanth Pandit, had strong affiliations with the Bajrang Dal. In this connection, we also profiled Acharya Azad Singh Arya, a gun-wielding guru who is the driving force behind Haryana's Gaurakshaks. In February-March, misleading videos started surfacing on social media with claims that migrant workers from Bihar were being attacked in Tamil Nadu. Alt News's investigation showed that the viral visuals were mostly old, unrelated or shared out of context. Police registered cases and made some arrests. 
They also appealed on social media against spreading misinformation. In March, Alt News fact checked six viral videos which were claimed to be of attacks on Hindi speaking migrant laborers in Tamil Nadu and found that those clips were of unrelated incidents from various states. Around the same time, a fake Dainik Bhaskar clipping went viral which said that Hindi speaking laborers had been asked to vacate Tamil Nadu by March 20. We found that the newspaper clipping was not genuine. We also called out misreports by Dainik Bhaskar. Times Now Nav Bharat and TV9 Bharatwarsh, which falsely claimed that the deaths of Bihari migrant labourers Pavan Yadav and Monu Kumar were cases of attacks on Bihari migrants in Tamil Nadu. In 2023, Alt News intensified its vigil against hate speech. Communal clashes broke out in Haryana's Nu during a VHP Shobha Yatra on July 31st. Hindutva leaders made open calls for the killing of Muslims. Alt News documented 19 cases of hate speech delivered at Hindutva rallies and Mahapanchayats in Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Uttarakhand, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Punjab, Jharkhand and Delhi. Hateful slogans like Goli Maro Saloko were raised openly, sometimes in the presence of police. <laughs> In August, Z News falsely described Bajrangal leader Ashok Baba seen firing in a new violence video as a plain clothed cop. Tirada Singh, the MLA from Gosha Mahal constituency in Telangana, has a history of delivering incendiary speeches. Alt News documented his hate speeches in a series of four stories. At the Hindu Jan Akrosh Morcha in Mumbai on January 29th, Singh fueled anti-Muslim sentiments and called for violence and economic boycott against Muslims. Singh also participated in Shiv Jayanti celebrations in Latur, where he asserted that without Shivaji Maharaj, all Hindus would have been circumcised. He encouraged Hindus to defy police actions and take a stand against descendants of Afzal. <laughs> Singh went on to speak at a number of rallies in Maharashtra, delivering similar hate-filled speeches. Alt News documented his speeches in four different places, Solapur, Srirampur, Aurangabad and Malangar. In the fourth story, we documented what was arguably the most hateful of all speeches, delivered at the Ram Navami Shobha Yatra in Hyderabad on March 30. He used wild remarks and expletives while referring to Muslims. The rally also saw portraits of Nathuram Godse being waved by participants. Despite facing FIRs and legal notices, Singh continues to make hate speeches. Alt News also profiled right-wing activist Kajal Hindustani. In Maharashtra, on January 5, she amplified the oft-repeated notion of a rate card for Hindu women that has been debunked several times in the past. <laughs> On August 8th, she said in a speech at a private university in Gujarat, Every Gauri feels that she should get a Shah Rukh. Every Karina feels that she should get a Saif Ali Khan. She was arrested on March 31st, 2023 for delivering hate speech at a rally in Gujarat. At least 288 people were killed in a horrific train accident in Orisha's Balasur district on June 2nd. 10 to 12 coaches of the Shalimar Chennai Coromandel Express got derailed and fell over on another track, colliding with the Bengaluru Hara Superfast Express. A good strain was also involved in the crash. Within hours, the accident was communalized on social media. Several users pointed out a building near the site and claimed that it was a mosque, suggesting that Muslims had a role in the tragedy. Alt News found that the building was actually an ISKCON temple. Ironically, ISKCON Vice President Radha Ramon Das was among those who amplified the false claim. Days later, it was claimed that the station master of the Bahanaga Bazar railway station, a certain Sharif, was absconding since the accident. 
Alt News found that the official's name was S. B. Mohanty, and he had joined the probe. Several other unrelated clips were shared around this time, stoking conspiracy theories. History sheeter and five-time MLA Ati Kamad and his brother Ashraf were shot dead in Prayagraj on April 15th, despite heavy police presence. Video footage and eyewitnesses stated that Jai Shri Ram slogans were raised by the murderers. This was called a hoax by right-wing users. Alt News found that the slogans were indeed raised. Again, it was falsely claimed that Atik and Ashraf's murderers were supporters of Akhilesh Yadav. Ethnic riots broke out in Manipur in the month of May. A disturbing video of two women being paraded naked and molested went viral, shocking the entire country. Following the incident, numerous false claims were circulated online. For instance, media outlet ANI falsely linked the arrest of a 38-year-old Abdul Hilim in Manipur with the gang rape case. However, police later clarified that the arrest was made in connection with an extortion case. Ena issued an apology afterwards. In another case, a video of a naked woman chasing police officers was falsely linked to a conspiracy in Manipur. In reality, the video was from Uttar Pradesh, involving a dispute between supporters of two local leaders. Amar Ohom, a local newspaper in Assam, incorrectly reported on its front page that a young woman had been shot dead on the main road in Manipur, while the incident actually took place in Myanmar. A misleading claim involving Manipur BJP state vice president Chidanand Singh and his son also did the rounds online, with users falsely accusing them in a sexual assault case of cookie women. In a debate on the TV9 Bharatvarsh channel, BJP spokesperson Shahzad Poonawala claimed that former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh never spoke on violence in the Northeast during his tenure. However, the archives of the Prime Minister's office showed multiple occasions in which the ex-PM addressed incidents in the Northeast and visited the region. 2023 saw the mainstreaming of the Abdul trope on social media. Abdul, a common Muslim name, is often used by the right wing to generalize and target the minority community. In a long-form article in June, we traced how the word Abdul and the phrase Mera Abdul Aisa Nahi Hai were used by the right wing ecosystem with allusions to the Shraddha Walker murder case to demonize the Muslim community by implying that being involved with a Muslim man or Abdul would result in a fate similar to Shraddha's. In January, we published a profile of Devesh Kumar after months-long investigation and painstaking research into his antecedents. The Wire filed a police complaint against Kumar, accusing him of presenting fabricated information for a series of stories that the outlet had done on Meta. This came a week after the outlet retracted those stories. Alt News' deep dive report on Kumar uncovered a pattern of manipulation, fraud and false claims made by him over the years. The India vs Bharat debate captured the fancy of the nation in the month of July with several BJP leaders, right-wing influencers and celebrities claiming that the name India is a colonial relic or given by the British. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sharma tweeted that the British had named our country as India. He changed the word India to Bharat in his ex-bio. In a story that cited several primary historical sources, Alt News showed that the word India was first used by the Greeks and it predates the arrival of the British to the subcontinent by several centuries. To call it a British colonial relic is a distortion of history. As the use of artificial intelligence becomes more and more commonplace, deep fakes are something we will have to learn to deal with in the coming days. Last year, a deep fake video of actress Rashmika Mandana underlined the immensity of the issue at hand. Similarly, a smiling selfie of wrestlers Vinesh Fogart, Bajrang Punia and Sakshi Malik were circulated in May after they had been taken into custody while protesting at Jantar Mantar in Delhi. However, the wrestlers were not smiling in the actual photo. It had been doctored using AI. The Israel-Hamas war that has killed close to 23,000 people so far dominated headlines across the world in the months of October and November. The Indian right wing has, in fact, played a leading role in disseminating pro-Israel misinformation on social media. 
Several users shared false claims with the hashtag Pallywood, suggesting that Palestine's claims of casualty were fabricated and scenes of death and destruction in Gaza were often staged. Completely unrelated visuals like behind-the-scenes footage of movies were shared out of context. Alt News found that the State of Israel and several of its official ex-handles had shared disinformation, not once, but on multiple occasions. Israel shared a picture of a slain child's shrouded body, claiming it was actually a doll. The investigation by Alt News revealed that the photo was indeed of the corpse of four-year-old Omar Bilal al-Banna. In another instance, in a bid to discredit Palestine, Israel's official ex-handle described a patient in a viral video as an actor. He was actually a survivor of West Bank refugee camp raid by the IDF in July. Platform accountability is one of Alt News' focus areas. Social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, or X, have their own guidelines to address fake, misleading or hateful content. In April, Alt News published an extensive report exposing a network of Facebook pages connected to 23 websites with the same IP address. These pages had invested an enormous amount of money in advertisements, promoting the BJP and spreading hate against the opposition. The websites resurfaced despite going offline temporarily following our report. Alt News also identified Facebook pages misusing the names of well-known personalities to run misleading advertisements, a matter that Meta has seemingly neglected. Another Meta story by Alt News uncovered violations of election commission rules during the 2022 Gujarat Assembly elections. Our investigation revealed that over 30 lakh rupees of social media ad spendings were not mentioned in the election expenses submitted by CM Bhupendra Patel to the Election Commission. In addition, a page linked to the BJP violated the silent period rule, reflecting a significant breach of norms. As we go into a new year, Team Alt News is resolved to create a healthier information ecosystem by working with renewed vigor in the four major fields of its work – misinformation, hate speech, media watch and social media platform accountability.